We have to get the resort people before they leave. I think we will all have to leave this beach. Wait, why? They left already. What happened? We really don't know what happened. Well, I think this man had something to do with it. Man, if I was involved, why would I be standing around, bro? Damn. His nose is bleeding. I think he got that when she was trying to defend herself. I don't like this dynamic at all. Well, my nose has been bleeding for hours, man. I don't know why he's doing that. Charles, something's wrong with your mother. She's asking for you, honey. Well, we're all in this now. We are responsible for that woman. And I've got nothing against this man. I'm just doing what needs to be done. Friska, I think we should leave. Let's get the kids back to the resort. So, uh, so, if you want to stand up for one second, we'll put you on these boxes here. And action! All right, here we go, guys. Be careful and action! And action! It seems like the most open space, this huge beach, beach in this cove. And then as things become more and more weird and more and more threatening uh, and they can't leave, it, it becomes very claustrophobic for these individuals on this beach. And you can see them panicking and they're trying to get out. There's no doors to leave. And uh, that suffocation the audience feels and, and the, 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 what used to be beautiful now becomes oppressive and dangerous. The water, which looks so beautiful at first, just just becomes death to you. Um, that slow turn from um, something that was safe to something that's unsafe was uh, a beautiful uh, goal of ours in the movie. You know, I think it's ultimately, if we were talking about a genre, it would probably be in the sci-fi thriller genre. Um, but all, all of the films have a, a very strong, dramatic film at the center of it. That's really the engine underneath, the emotional engine, but the clothes are the, the genre. Um, and I think from Sixth Sense on, that kind of fusion of drama and thriller has been the one that feels satisfying to me. I never wanted you to feel 
safe. I wanted you to be figuring out something and then another thing comes on you. And now you're trying to figure out two things and now a third thing comes on you. And now you go, okay, I think I got these three things, then another thing and another thing. And then you just, I'm trying to get you to let go. Eventually you get to where the characters are, which is I'll never be able to answer all these problems. I think audiences can sense the author's uh, value system. Yeah. And they can, no matter how dark I get, and boy, do I get dark. I mean, I've done things in movies that you just can't do, right? You just can't do. I kill everybody, right? This is like, uh, you, you could be a star, you could be a baby, you could be whatever. You're, you're not safe in these movies. And the reason that I can do that and the audience goes with me is I think ultimately they're feeling that the person telling the story is hopeful and, and uh, cherishes family, cherishes love and, you know, um, really it aspires to believe in the, the universe is a benevolent place. As your body's growing, the matrix of your mind is changing as well. So you are a 40 year old man. You're taking in the, the, the situation as a 40 year old man takes in the complexity of the way you're sitting and the way you looked at your watch. I'm catching all of that. Whereas if I was 12, I wouldn't catch that you glanced at your watch or, or you actually a little bit, there's something disingenuous about what you just said. I, when I, but at 40, you can feel it. You can feel those colors and you can, the complexity. You don't have the life experience. So there's that gap in the life experience, but the matrix and how you're taking in the world is complex and subtle. So that was very uh, specific for the actors. I said, don't, don't make it seem like you are 12 and now you're taking in information like a 12 year old you're 40 and you're trying to make sense of all the information that your 40 year old mind is telling you it's slowed down and it's telling you to focus in on these kind of things you're not having you're not firing thoughts like a 10 year old a 12 year old. you're not all over the place and distracted by the light and kind of go, oh i'm hungry no no no. you're not doing that you're you know you're taking in information in a certain way that's different than in other movies where uh somebody grows really quickly let's say for example so that was a really interesting task for the actors uh, to get a hold of. We had so much in favor with this film to create the characters. First, because, okay, Guy, Guy and Priska are going through a very difficult situation in their matrimony, you know? Uh, Guy is a, a person that is very, uh, you know, just to draw broad colors, is very afraid and a bit uh, <laughs> anal retentive, you know? He's a little bit scared of things, uh, tense in that sense. Um, not aggressive, but kind of, you know, not going through a good period in his life. He's very committed to that understanding of what he, he feels about the movie. But this commitment is interesting, you know, it's this figuring it out in his head, you know, and thinking about it and the things that I'm really uh, fascinated by how night works is his um, he's got a, a great capacity of being assertive which is something that is so useful you know and so necessary Be being very assertive being very good at at always trying to dissect the um, the specificity that's that's needed in a way uh, because that specificity opens up for the ambiguity or for the or for the, let's say, the complexity of the characters and of the story. And, um, and I think that's something that he does really, really well. And definitely his, his work, his, his mise-en-scene, you know, his, where he puts the camera, the way he goes around, the way he, he trusts silences, the way he trusts uh, uh, the moments, the way he uh, engages with them. Um, with the tension, the way he creates that, is truly remarkable. The kind of very theatrical setting that this is, because we have a beach, we have a sea over there, you know, we have a, a fourth wall, let's say. We have a wall here behind us, left and right, that's all you have. So there's nowhere to hide. There's nowhere to, um, to change kind of, uh, energy in a location, you know, it's, uh, it's a very straightforward, uh, kind of strong components of, of, of tragedy, you know, uh, and, uh, and that was something that was very, very interesting because 
once, once you put that and those elements at play, well, you can come up with anything. And you can really come up with any convention of any, you know, any uh, spell or mystery or sorcery that's going on. And, uh, and so it was, it was, it, it challenged me in that sense, like when reading it, thinking, well, how are we going to do this? You know, how are we going to be able to achieve this? And it's uh, like musical notes as well and, and like musical keys. I mean, I speak on a, on a different tonality and my, my character speaks on a different tonality than maybe someone that would come from another country, definitely. So it is the, you, you get also those good things, you know, whilst doing, uh, um, playing with actors from different parts of the world. You get different musical scales and you put them together and it's, it works, you know. I was covered in sand and sweat the entire time, so it just made me, it just made it feel a little bit more real, a little bit more grounded, and being able to go for a swim at the end of the day. I just think that's what comes with working in nature, is that kind of you get a, yeah, you're, you're so vulnerable to the environment, you, you feel a lot smaller, and I think Knight might have felt that he really had to bow down to like to nature to like all the you know to the, the the rain or the wind or the sun or waves or whatever it was we were all very we were a bunch of people working i don't know around nature in, in a way so it kind of put things into perspective a little bit the main way i prepared was i just thought a lot about my family and about the love I have, particularly for my little sister, because Maddox is the big sister to Trent. I just thought a lot about my sister and how much I love her. And I thought about when you're younger, your relationship with your parents is just that, they're your parents, and you don't really have to think about how to be with them so I think, yeah, just like when you get, the older you get, you start to, things become deeper, like colours become more complicated and Maddox realises there's so much, so much emotion, so much feelings, everybody is, you know, you don't, the older you get, you don't really, you learn more, but you, you, you're still a child, really, you're still figuring things out. And Maddox is so, such an empath, she really feels things for people. Knight says he's a, he's a, there's hunters and there are gatherers um, and he's a hunter where he knows what he wants and then the gatherers, they're the directors that turn up on the day and they go, oh, that would be nice or that could be cool or um, Knight's the opposite of that, he knows and, and, and I think I'm like, my tendency is more towards, I mean, I'm not a director but as an actor I'm more towards gathering I'm oftentimes I'll show up on the day and I'll, I'll have prepared but I don't know, sometimes I'm, I'm kind of, I'm not quite so direct as that. And so for me, it's, um, I have to give a lot of trust tonight that he knows what he wants, he knows what's gonna work and he knows what it'll look like. And so I kind of have to surrender to that, to that, 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 that you know, being so choreographed and go, he knows, he knows what's gonna be good. He knows what's gonna look good. So I trust completely in him. Knight, is a, he's a real family man. He had his daughters here, his, his whole family came here. So I really appreciated that, that feeling that there was family, there was a, it was a family environment. And having the cast, it's such a wonderful cast, especially like Vicky and Gael, they really, really took on a very parental role for me. So I felt really supported that there were people I could go to if I wasn't feeling secure in any, any way. And having Eliza and Alex and Abby, just the whole cast was so wonderful. So that was a, a really amazing for me. I don't think I've gotten as like close with a cast in any other, like I, I feel so like we're really, really, really tight with this cast. It's like a, a very unique experience for me. Knight has such an incredible clarity of vision 
and at the same time is so open um, to receiving ideas and receiving thoughts and offers. Um, and that's what makes, in my opinion, his work timeless. Um, so it's an honor to be here working on old and I, I, I truly believe this is something truly special, man. In my mind, Midsize Sedan is, um, he's a musician, um, specifically uh, a hip hop musician. Um, and I, I envision him in my mind as a very conscious lyricist. Um, people who I drew inspiration from for this character are some of my favorite artists like J. Cole, um, Kendrick Lamar, Nipsey Hussle, to name a few. These are, these are artists in the real world who in my, in my mind are so conscious and so thoughtful um, and have a real sense of who they are. And um, I drew a lot of inspiration from artists, those artists themselves and other artists similar to, 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 to mold this character. Um, he's a very thoughtful person, mid-sized sedan. Um, maybe to his detriment, maybe to his benefit, um, but he's, it, it's such a great character to explore. But Knight, more than other directors, I find to be very um, collaborative, I guess, is the, the, the best word that I can say, um, and open. I find him to be as much choreographed as he is, I find him to be really open. And he's not, he, he's precise about what he's precise about. You know, he's very precise about his words that he wrote, he's very precise about where the camera's going, you know, he wants to see you. I find him to be uh, the perfect combination of things, of, of directors, where he's both, you know, trying to get you to do things very specifically, but also if you have an idea that you've thought about for a while, he's more than willing to embrace it. Knight really is looking out for your best interest, and Knight really has the whole picture, um, and is also with you in that moment. The fact that I got to read Knight's script was so exciting because we had like three hours to read it. You know, he's very protective, and uh, and it meant like, oh, like I'm I'm I might be you know, either getting this part or I might be, you know, getting closer to it. And so for me, it, it, at a certain point, it didn't even matter what the script was. Knight is one of my big heroes and I was, you know, just oh, the excitement of just opening it up and having only three hours to read it felt like Mission Impossible or something. Um, but then it just happened to be that I was just sobbing at the end of this movie and um, screaming out loud and laughing. It was probably the most animated, the most outwardly um, responsive I've ever been to just reading something. I mean, it was like, it's just such an incredibly powerful, moving um, and, you know, thought provoking story. It's an extremely unusual and gripping read. It's not quite like anything else I've ever read before. And the character itself is so contradictory and so difficult to get a handle on. It took me a, a couple of reads to really uh, work out how I felt about him. He's got very strong ideas about the way he wants to shoot it, the way he composes the shots have been pre-planned. And sometimes the idea of the way to play the scene that you have in your head is very different from the way it's composed and the way it ends up being physically composed, sometimes diametrically opposed the way you've geographically, not just geographically, that means emotionally, because how close you stand to someone, whether you're facing away from them, towards them, these things have their emotional causes. But what I think has given us a lot of faith is that occasionally when you're feeling confused about the way a scene is, is being constructed physically, you'll get a glimpse of the shot and you'll realize that it's the storytelling is more clear in the frame than it feels to you. And once that became familiar, that experience, we started to trust more and more.
people might think that they are on one side, but they're driven by forces underneath them that you don't know what you secretly believe sometimes. People do not know. They might think they're on the side of good, but they might have impulses that are subterranean that are different. And sometimes these things come out in madness. In my experience quite often that unresolved fears, conflicts spill out uh, in, a, in a very dangerous and frightening way. Futureprevews.com. Whoa! Go behind the scenes of movies. Subscribe to Future Flicks YouTube channel.